In this lesson, we will learn how to apply synthetic division. It is a faster, easier way to divide polynomials. It basically follows the same principle and pattern that you would have used with long division when you were much younger. So for now, let's skip over this first part that says division algorithm. And let's just look at this part that talks about synthetic division. If you're looking at your notes, you will see all of the correct signs in the correct place. There's a little bit of uh, uploading uh, issue for, for that with the format. In this particular um, example that you're seeing, but I'll, I'll call out the correct placement of signs when we get ready to do this. But what I want you to do for right now is go back to elementary school when you first learned how to uh, do long division. And let's review real quickly the steps you would have used in long division. Let's say we were going to divide 7 into a number like 9,825. Okay, we would begin by asking ourselves, 7 will go into 9 how many times? Well, one time, so we put a 1 above the 9. Then, what we wrote down on top, we multiply times the divisor. 1 times 7 is 7. We will then subtract 9 minus 7 is 2, and do you remember the next step? Bring down the next digit, and we go again. 7 would go into 28 four times. It actually goes evenly, because 4 times 7 is 28. So when we subtract, we get 0. But we still have to bring down the next digit, and because 7 will not go into 2, we will put a 0 up here. 7 times 0 is 0. We still subtract, and we will bring down that last digit, 5. How many times would 7 go into 25? Well, it will only go 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21, and when we subtract, we get 4 as a remainder. Now, if you remember, when you first learned division, you probably would have put an R and a 3 to show you had, or I'm sorry, an R and a 4 to show you had a remainder of 4. But probably a few months later, with some practice, your teacher most likely instructed you to take that remainder, turn it into the numerator of a fraction where the divisor is the denominator. And that would mean 7 divides into 9,825, 1,403, and 4 sevenths times. Now, if I were to show you how to do long division with polynomials, I want you to pay close attention. We're going to follow the same basic procedure, but notice we have variables and exponents now. So here are the rules you have to follow. Be sure that you have your numerator and your denominator written in descending order. You have to be sure you have the variable with the largest exponent in your first term and that it descends down one degree at a time. If we have any missing terms, we'll have to put in a zero for a placeholder. So I'll alert you to that when we see one. If I check this particular polynomial, it's 4x to the third minus 15x squared. In fact, let me start writing this down minus 15x squared, then we have plus 11x and minus 10. Now, as far as terms go, this is to the, the first one's to the third power, the second one is to the second power, the third one is to the first power, and then a constant is the same as x to the zero power. So it's in descending order, and I do not have any missing terms. I don't have, say, an x squared that's missing or an x term that's missing. Now, my denominator also has to be in descending order. It is, and that means x minus 3 is my divisor. Now, I realize that may look confusing and complicated, but we're going to use the same process we just did with long division. That means I will take the first term in the divisor, and I will look at the first term in the dividend. 
and ask myself, x will go into 4x to the third how many times? Or you might think of it as x times what will give me 4x to the third? Well, that's going to be 4x squared. Now, just like we did with our numbers, we're going to take what we wrote down and multiply it times our divisor. We need to be a little bit careful, though, because notice our divisor has two terms. It's a binomial. So when I multiply 4x squared times x minus 3, I need to remember to use the distributive property. And now if I distribute through, that will give me 4x to the third minus 12x squared. Okay, now be careful because if I go back and look at my example with long division, here is where we are. Remember, after we wrote down the product we got when we multiplied what we'd written on top times the divisor, we then needed to subtract. Not a big deal when it was long division with numbers. Now that it's with polynomials, notice we're subtracting two terms. It's a binomial expression. If I'm going to have to subtract both of those terms, remember that subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite you will find you'll make fewer sign mistakes if you change the sign of both of these terms and then add your terms together. So my positive 4x to the third has now become negative 4x to the third. My negative 12x squared has now become positive 12x squared. And when I add, my x to the thirds cancel and my negative 15x squared plus 12x squared is now negative 3x squared. We're almost ready to repeat the process. Remember what comes next? We would bring down the next digit. If we were working with numbers, since it's a polynomial, bring down the next term. And now we go again. We say x times what would give us negative 3x squared? Well, I'm going to need a negative 3x. And that means I now multiply negative 3x times x minus 3. Okay, if I distribute, that's a negative 3x squared plus 9x. What's next? Add the opposite. Change all of my signs and then I can add up. So my negative 3x squared is now positive. My positive 9x is now plus a negative 9x. And when I add up, first terms cancel, which is good, that should happen. And 11x minus 9x gives me 2x. Almost done. Last term comes down, it's a minus 10. And I ask myself, x times what gives me 2x? I need a plus 2. And so I will multiply 2 times x minus 3. That will give me 2x minus 6. Be really careful. In long division of polynomials, this is the place you're most likely to make a mistake with signs. Don't forget, we're still subtracting, so that means we're going to change the signs in the uh, lower grouping. That's positive 2x now becomes negative 2x. The negative 6 now becomes a positive 6, so that when we add, the x terms have canceled. We now have minus 4 for remainder, and just like we made a fraction when we worked with numbers, we're going to make a fraction with the long division of polynomials. We're going to have minus 4 in the numerator over, we will keep the same divisor, x minus 3. And that would be the way you would divide using long division of polynomials. The process is identical. It's just a little more confusing because you see variables and exponents. So what I want to show you is synthetic division. It is a faster way to do this long division. In fact, you might call it a shortcut. And here's the basic way that it works. You still have to have your polynomials in descending order. You want to write down your row of coefficients in the numerator, though. So if I look at what I have, I'm going to have a 4 a negative 15, then I had positive 11, and negative 10.
Notice I had no missing terms. If I had a missing term, I would have put in a zero as a placeholder. Now my divisor, this is the part that's a little bit more tricky. Remember when we looked at transformations uh, in equations back in chapter two, and we discussed the fact that if something happens just to the x, that it ends up being the opposite of what it looks like. If we had an x plus five, in uh, an equation, and that x plus 5 was in parentheses and squared, what that told us was there was a horizontal shift, but it didn't move 5 to the right. Instead, it moved 5 to the left. Whatever follows the x, we would take the opposite sign to tell us which way we're actually going. Well, it's sort of the same thing here. We have x minus 3 in the denominator, we would have to take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and solve, or we would just have to remember we're taking the opposite sign of what we see, and that would mean 3 will be our divisor, positive 3, not negative 3. Now, if I set this up correctly, as long as I understand how to set it up and I don't make a mistake here, here is how synthetic division works. You would draw yourself a line, always start by bringing down that first coefficient. So I'm going to have a 4 on the bottom. Now I'll multiply this 4 times my divisor 3 and I write it beneath the next term. Now let's add up. Negative 15 plus 12 gives me a negative 3. Multiply that negative 3 times 3, I get negative 9 and I write that under the next term. 11 minus 9 gives me 2 and 2 times 3 is 6 so I write that at the end negative 10 plus 6 is a negative 4. Now, I want you to notice something. Compare this row for my answer using what I've told you is synthetic division to the answer I got using long division of polynomials. Do you recognize those are the same coefficients we had in the answer after we did long division? All we would need to do is take this row and put our variables back in place to have the answer. The row itself is not the answer, but it will give us the coefficients in the answer. Therefore, if we were to divide out this polynomial, we would have 4x squared. And the reason it's x squared is if I look at the original polynomial in the numerator, the first term was x to the third. I will always reduce that exponent by 1 so I'm going to have 4x squared minus 3x plus 2, and then whatever is at the very end, notice I put a box around it, that becomes my remainder. So that was minus 4 over, and then we keep the same divisor, x minus 3. Same answer, faster process. It's a great tool, and there are a lot of things we can learn from using synthetic division. Now, if you go to the part that talks about the remainder theorem, it tells us that if we have a polynomial and it's divided by x minus k, where k just stands for some number, a neat thing happens. The remainder, what we would get in the remainder spot in synthetic division, will be the same thing we would have gotten if we had plugged in k and just used that for our x value and evaluated it, okay? So here's what that means. If I wanted you to evaluate this polynomial, 3x to the fourth, I'm sorry, negative 3x to the fourth, plus 15x to the third, minus 50x, plus 25, and I ask you to find what f of 4 is, as long as you've got a calculator, you could put 4 in place of x, clean that thing up, and see what value you come up with. And that's what we've been doing. But without a calculator, that would be very challenging. We would have to take that 4, raise it to the fourth power. There'd be a lot of work involved in cleaning it up. Here is one of the nice things you can use synthetic division for. We're going to set this up with that row of coefficients. Now, if I check these terms, the first one was an x to the fourth. The next one was an x to the third. Do you notice there is an x squared term missing? We jump from x to the third to an x term. 
So when we write the row of coefficients, we'll have the negative 3 first. We're going to have 15, and it was positive. Where we should have an x squared, we'll put in the 0. The x term has a coefficient of negative 50, and then our constant term was a positive 25. Now, if I want to evaluate it for an x value of 4, that means my divisor is 4. Notice this didn't follow an x. We're not changing any signs here. If it asks us to find f of 4, just use 4 as your divisor. Now, using synthetic division, bringing down the first term gives me a negative 3. Multiply that times 4, I get negative 12. Add 15 and negative 12, I have positive 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Add that up and I get 12. 12 times 4 is 48. And negative 50 plus 48 is a negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. And that gives me 17 in the remainder spot. Double check this. If you use your calculator now and you were to plug in 4 for x, see what you get if you enter this into your calculator. Negative 3 times 4 to the 4th plus 15 times 4 to the third, and then we would have minus 50 times 4 plus 25. If you double check and clean all that up, guess what you get? 17. This is an awesome tool because it means even without a calculator, you can quickly and effectively evaluate polynomials for a particular value. It will always be the same thing as what you get in the remainder. Okay, here's another reason synthetic division is very useful for us. Think about it for a moment. If we are using synthetic division, we know that what shows up in that very last spot in our answer row of coefficients is our remainder. Well, if something divides in evenly, what should your remainder be? Obviously, it ought to be a zero for a remainder. So, if we're dividing by some number using synthetic division, and if we were to get zero in that remainder spot, that is going to tell us that we have found an x-intercept of the graph of the function. Remember, finding a zero is the same as finding a root which is the same as finding an x-intercept. That's very useful information, especially when we get ready to graph. And we will be doing that later in this unit. So we're going to determine whether the number we've been given is a zero for the function or not. So here's how we begin. Notice this is not anything that is following an x. They've just told us that k is equal to 2. So 2 would be our divisor in this first problem. If I go across my row of coefficients, I have an x to the third term, an x squared term, but do you see an x term? No. So I'm going to have to put a 0 in when I get to the x term. So I'm going to start with a positive 2. Then I would have a negative 3 because that was the coefficient for the x squared. Make sure you put a 0 for the x term, and then you would have negative 18 at the end. Now I'm ready to divide. So I'm going to bring down the first term. It's a 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. If I multiply 2 times 2, which is my divisor, I get 4. That gives me negative 14 in this remainder spot. Now notice the question I was asked to answer. Determine whether the given number is a 0 of your function. If it is, what should be the value in the remainder spot? It should be zero. This is not. Therefore, it is not a zero. Okay, one more example that we will look at, and that is a polynomial that has an x to the fourth term, an x to the third, an x squared, an x, and a constant. So it does not appear that we have any missing terms. Our divisor is negative 3. k equals a negative 3. So now if I put my coefficients, remember, if I see x to the fourth as that first term, 
What is actually the coefficient in front of it? It's the number one. When I don't see it, it's an understood one. The next coefficient is a negative four that's in front of the x to the third. I have a negative 14 that's in front of the x squared. I have a positive 36 that's in front of the x term. And then I have a positive 45 for the constant. Now, I'm ready to divide. Let's bring down this first term. It's a one. One times negative three is negative three. When I add that together, that gives me negative seven. Negative seven times negative three is a positive 21. And negative 14 plus 21 would give me a positive seven. Multiply seven times negative three. Now I have a negative 21. 36 minus 21 gives me positive 15. And 15 times negative 3 is a negative 45. What happens when I add these last terms? I get 0 in the remainder spot. So do you believe that negative 3 is a 0 for the function? Yes, it is. So therefore, negative 3 is a 0.